Alrighty, guys, welcome to another episode of the Thrive Podcast, and I'm your host, Daniel Garbett, and today joining me is Brian Gold, and uh, I hope I got that surname right there. Um, so after, I'll just give you an introduction, introduce Brian, and after suffering like various degenerative conditions, um, debilitating pain, serious digestive issues, Brian finally relented to the fact that, he, that his diet may have been playing a role in his failing health. And this led him to discovering the Bulletproof Diet and biohacking. And later on in the show, Brian, I'd love to hear about your routine that you've got now after discovering that biohacking field. And uh, hopefully we'll dive into that a little bit later. But fast forward four years and he's healthier, stronger than he's ever been. And mostly thanks to a low-carb, high-fat diet, a variety of biohacks that he practices every day and including, of course, red light therapy. So after his own personal health transformation using red light therapy, he was inspired to bring it to the world. And together with his partner, James Strong, they founded Red Light Rising back in 2017 with a mission of making groundbreaking technology available to the world to help people achieve optimal health and performance. And since then, the company has grown rapidly and expanded their range of products and always keeping the goal of delivering the, the best health benefits that only red light therapy can offer. So Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me awesome. today. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. So great to be here. That was a great intro. Perfect. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, like, you know, I, I'd really love to like hearing your story about, you know, your own health journey that you've been through. I really love like hearing people's experiences about what they've, what they learned, what they, what changed a lot, you know, with your psychology and the way that you looked at health specifically. Cause I remember for myself personally, you know, back in my early twenties and, just so unaware of how all these little moving parts can really impact, you know, my health. And, um, you know, I can really connect with your story with, you know, having a look at your diet and, you know, realizing that it was the foods that were really playing a big part in like the way that your body was feeling and responding. So I'd really love to hear like, what was your life like um, prior to, prior to like changing your diet and discovering the field of biohacking? Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's a crazy story when I when I think about it, and I look back on it, the amount of suffering that I kind of put myself through, not knowing that it was my own fault, mm. um, and also not being honest enough that that I wasn't feeling great. You know, I was unfortunately I was a very preachy vegetarian, and I would mm. go around telling everybody like, oh man, plant based, you have to eat plants, like get rid of meat, it's this and that, like repeating all this, you know, this like these fake facts that we know aren't true anymore, you know, like the meat is going to rot in your intestines and it's going to make you sick and make you fat and plug up your heart with cholesterol and all that, you know, this is the kind of stuff I was spouting. Um, and I was, I was a hardcore vegetarian, man. I was like drinking massive big green smoothies every day and making vegetable juices and having giant salads, uh, thinking that I was doing the best for myself because I was under the impression that you know, vegetables were the best food on the planet. And, you know, the, the more raw vegetables you could eat, the even better that, that was because all the enzymes and all the vitamins and minerals were still intact. So I was eating a lot of vegetables, a lot of salads, a lot of raw stuff. And said in the intro, man, I was, you know, the, the first thing to go was my digestion. My mm -hmm. digestion got ruined pretty, pretty soon after I started. Now, I was vegetarian for about seven years. So I was, you know, you know, banging my head against the wall pretty much from day one. My digestion just immediately went out the window. I either had diarrhea for a couple of days, then I was constipated for a couple of days, then mm. I had diarrhea again. And this went on for about seven years, man. Like it mm. turned into an anxiety thing. Like what's going to happen today? Like, you know, am I, is my digestion okay today? Um, and I blamed it on, you know, like not having the right smoothie that day. You know, I blamed it on like, oh, I didn't get enough chia seeds or oh, maybe it's because I had, you know, the white, the white rice or something. You know, I always had an excuse. Um, and then a, probably, I guess, about a year or three or so, or so into the vegetarian journey, then I started getting all the aches and pains, mm. you know, like simple things. Like I would get out of the car the wrong way and kind of twist my knee and then my knee would be sore for days. Mm. Or, you know, I'd be working on a building site and suddenly notice that I had this crazy shoulder pain. Mm. I was like, man, like, what have I done? Like, I haven't, you know, I haven't lifted anything. I haven't banged into anything. Like, just these random pains would come up. 
Um, and it got so bad that like it got to a point where I actually had a little like a little duffel bag that I would take with me either at work or if I went traveling or wherever I went, I always had this little duffel bag that had all these straps in it. So I had knee straps and ankle straps and wrist straps because I never knew like when the pain was going to suddenly come on and, and I wasn't going to be able to like hold my phone, you know, like mm. the worst that I ever remember it being, man, it was actually while I was in Australia, um, I was spending time on my phone, like looking for jobs, you know, I was going mm. through these job sites on my phone. And both my wrists just suddenly seized up with the most mad pain I've ever experienced. Like I couldn't hold my phone. I couldn't close my hands because the pain in my wrist was so crazy. And it came out of nowhere, man. Um, so that went on, like I say, for probably about seven years. And, you know, I guess I got a little bit, a little bit puffy. I got, you know, I lost a lot of muscle mass. I got kind of weak. Uh, I had to stop working out. Um, I eventually had to stop practicing yoga because everything just hurt, you know, like I couldn't do a downward dog without crazy wrist pain and back pain and all this. Um, and I just, you know, I just pretty much thought like, well, you know, this is me like, you know, mid twenties already wrecked with pain and digestive problems and this and that. And then I, yeah, then like you say, I, I discovered the bulletproof diet. I'd, I'd kind of heard about it and I heard about bulletproof coffee. So I started reading like, what is this? And I was like, what? Low carb, high fat? That doesn't make sense. Like, how can, how can fat be good? Yeah. So I um, you know, started reading about fat and the importance of good quality fat and what that does for your hormones and what that does for your joints and your muscles. Um, and then that kind of led me to read about the paleo diet and reading more about meat and um, things like that. And, um, and then the, the big thing that clicked for me actually, which, you know, is, is, is a bit controversial, but I, I heard about the blood type diet. So this is like a very disputed idea that, um, your blood type dictates more or less what you should be eating and more or less what your lifestyle would be. So I read the book and my blood type is O negative. And in the book, it says people with blood type O negative are suited to eating a lot more meat and doing a lot of high intensity exercise. And I love exercising, man. I loved working out. The only reason I stopped was because of this joint pain. So I was like, oh my God, that's me. Like it says, like I should eat meat and then I should work out pretty hard. And I was like, man, I, I've loved the sound of that. That's, that's how I used to be growing up. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to try it. And I started eating small amounts of meat, but like still big piles of vegetables, small mm. amounts of meat. And slowly, 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 I started feeling better. And during this time, I was also reading more and more about paleo and keto. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, carnivore came, came onto the scene. And slowly, as I was learning more, I was eating less veg, more mm. fat, and more meat. And the more I did that, the better and better and better I got. I started losing all this body fat. I started, you know, looking more muscular. I slowly started working out again. I started having less pain. My joint pain went away. My digestive issues got better. And then about three or four years ago, I think, uh, the carnivore diet kind of blew up. And I was hardcore keto at the time. And the carnivore diet blew up. And I was like, oh, my God, this sounds mad. Eating just meat like this is crazy. And then I started like, you know, paying more attention to all the podcasts and all that. And I decided, well, you know what? I mean, at, the, at that point I was keto. So I was eating like a tiny little salad with like a few little olives, like one little tomato and a giant steak. And so I was like, oh, well, what difference does it make if I just get rid of that last bit of salad and then go carnivore? And then I went carnivore, strict carnivore for about two years and uh, completely healed all the joint pain, healed all the um, digestive issues. Um, and managed to get back to, to working out like I wanted to work out and, you know, lifting heavy and, and actually recovering and not feeling like shit for three weeks after a workout, you know? Yeah. So that was pretty much my, my diet journey. And then in between that as well, you know, some of your listeners might know that the author of the Bulletproof Diet, his name is Dave Asprey. He is also responsible for making biohacking, you know, quote unquote, cool. Mm. which is, you know, the red light therapy, the fasting, the cold therapy, the saunas and, and a bunch of other things. So yeah, at the same time, I was like, ooh, like, ooh, taking cold showers is really healthy for you. Oh, okay. So I started mm. taking cold showers and then, you know, I started learning like how to fast and all the science around fasting. So I started doing that. And 
Um, once I'd kind of handled all the cheap or free biohacks, like cold shower, for example, or breath work or whatever, I was then ready to like, okay, now I'm going to, you know, look into red light therapy, mm. which at the time there was like almost no one that was selling like red light therapy for the home user. So mm. it was very, very difficult for me to get my hands on it. So I just kind of, I was like, well, look, I'm not paying this crazy amount to get this red light therapy thing. So I'll just kind of wait. And then, you know, if someone in my, in my biohacking circle had a red light therapy device that I eventually got to try. And um, yeah, and then the rest is history. I've, I've given you a lot to go on there. So I wanted to give you a chance to speak and then, we can, and then we can carry on if you want. Yeah, well, like, first of all, like, to, to give, the, give the listeners like a bit of a gauge on like the pain that you must have been experiencing to not being able to hold your phone, like that's, that's pretty, pretty intense, right? And I think one thing that like I know myself, I can connect a lot with what you said there, how, you know, being 20 years old and experiencing a lot of this pain in your body and, um, you know, you just think like that's just how life is. I think there's so many people out there that are experiencing like aches and pains in their body. You know, they're not firing as well as they could when they were in their early twenties and, you know, late teens and things like that. And, you know, people in their thirties, you know, forties, like feeling, feeling those feelings. And, um, you know, I've, I've experimented, uh, red, red light therapy myself. I'm pretty, pretty new to it, but prior to that, like we experimented with a couple of other, you know, EMF type machines. And it's really amazing to see all of this new technology coming out because, you know, for, for myself, I could, I was in a place where, you know, I had a lot of pain in my body and I was like, I just need some relief. And to be able to realize just how well you can feel, like after you get out of that place is like, you know, a game changer. And um, I just want to commend you as well. Like two years on carnivore. That's, that's awesome. I, uh, mm. I did it. I did it straight for about three months, uh, just meat and like, you know, got much stronger body comp improved mental clarity and focus was absolutely amazing um but yeah i just couldn't couldn't stick to it full 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 on especially having a family mm. and things like that so two years mm. doing the carnival is awesome and mm. like um like how how long like uh how long would you say that you've been using using red lights for like i know you guys started the the business in 2017 we were you using it for a little while before that before it sort of kicked off yeah um so my my little red light therapy story is you know i kind of touched on it there i was i've, I've been reading a lot about it and um you know if anybody googles the science behind red light therapy or the history of red light therapy like it's not new mm. it's very 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 old you know people discovered the the power of of red light therapy a long long time ago but what is new in the last decade or so is, is that we can now use LEDs to make red light therapy because back in the day, it was lasers. So mm -hmm. that's why you, you, know, you had to go to a doctor and it was this massive like $25,000, $35,000 machine to do this mm -hmm. little red laser on, 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 a, on a painful knuckle or a painful wrist or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but when, when, they this, when the LED technology got better and you know, who, whoever's bright idea it was to try and make red light therapy with LEDs and discovered mm -hmm. that it worked, it works mm -hmm. exactly the same way as the expensive lasers do. Um, that's when it kind of, you know, Dave Asprey started talking about it a lot. And that's, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Dave Asprey that brought, you know, red light therapy to the, to the mainstream um, conscience, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, so it was, it was crazy expensive back in the day. And I was like, oh, there's no way I'm doing that. And then um, I was hanging out with this group of biohackers in London, in the UK. And uh, we had this, we used to have this like monthly meetups where we'd just talk about all these things and drink bulletproof coffee and blah, blah, blah. And someone brought an LED based red light mm. device with them and, and everyone got to try it. And it was the first time any of us had seen one, you know, and it was the intensity of the light was so bright that it was just, it was unbelievable, you know? So we all got a few minutes to sit in front of it um and kind of that that was it you know i was like well seems cool you know okay whatever it's it's still too expensive for me i'm not going to buy it and then that's when james came into the picture you know my business partner james strong he was we were part of that same little group and he said to me like you know he was the same level as me we, we, we were doing all the free and cheap stuff and now we were getting ready to start actually investing in the more expensive stuff 
And he said to me, like, look, man, like, you know, I really want to do this red light therapy. I'm going to try and make some, make one myself. You know, there's, you know, you can do a bunch of research and figure out what you need to do. So we, I said, yeah, sure, I'll give him a hand. And we came up with our first little model, well, our first design, and we got someone to make it for us. And we made like, I think, four units mm. in that first run, just for fun, just for amongst ourselves, you know, one for James, one for me, and then one each for two other friends. And it was in the middle of winter in London. Um, and I just started using this, you know, I was still working as a carpenter and it was a very bad time in my life. I was very, very depressed. You know, it, I was, I was getting to the end of my tolerance for working as a carpenter. Mm. I was just at the point where I hated it. So it was making me depressed and it was middle of winter in London. So it was cold. It was dark. Mm. You know, I hated living in London. I hated the winter and I hated carpentry. So I was in a really, really bad mood, like all of the time. And I started using the red light therapy, you know, just literally, the, you know, 20 minutes in the morning, do my little meditation before work. And within a few days, I was walking down the London street, you know, <laughs> with no coat on, middle of winter, no coat on, whistling, looking at the sky in a great mood. And I realized, like, why am I in such a good mood? Like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I, I was really not enjoying any aspect of my life at that point. And I was like, oh my God, is this red light therapy really working? Because what it, one of the things it does is it improves your mood. Mm. Because, you know, in an example of my example, the, the cold London days, the gray days, you know, seasonal affective disorder, your mood just hits, hits the ground. Mm. And that's part of what had happened to me. So when you get this dose of red light, it perks up that part of your brain that is involved with mood and, and the feel good hormones and all that. And mm. I was literally walking down the road, not cold, which is, was also another miracle because I hate the, win the winter and I was not cold. I was warm. I was in a great mood and I was like, oh my God, like this is really working. And then after that, the things I started noticing is that, you know, working as a carpenter, I always had cuts and bruises and, mm. you know, aches and pains in my hand and splinters and this and that from, from being on a building site. I started noticing that the pain associated with all those injuries was disappearing a lot quicker. And the wounds themselves, you know, if I cut myself with a knife, the wounds itself was healing up much faster than it normally did. And mm. that's when I realized, oh, my God, like, this is something. This is really, really working. So I kind of phoned around and I was like, hey, what do you guys think about this red light therapy? And they all loved it. You know, yeah. they were all saying, yeah, I feel great. I feel I'm in a great mood. Like, I've got loads of energy. Um, so then James and I, the other two lads weren't interested. And James and I were like, huh. Should we try and, you know, make these mm. and sell these, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, and as I say, I was like hating my life at the time. So I was like, yeah, you know, let's do it. You know, I need a distraction. And then, uh, uh, you know, within a couple of days, Red Light Rising had been established. And uh, we started producing, uh, you know, more on mass. And yeah, luckily we had a, we had a circle of, we had a network in London that was already in the stuff. So, you know, it was kind of an easy as it because they all were really educated on it so we sold our first batch of bikes to our sorry just cut out are you there yeah i'm here yeah. oh yeah cool cool this sort of went uh a bit stagnant there for a little while but um you're saying that you you sold them all to your friends in london yeah 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 so we had um we had a little community of biohackers in london and um, they were like, you know, waiting for red light therapy, but they all had the same problem that we did. Mm. There was no way to buy it. And then we made them. And then, you know, we had a, we had a great little audience already. Um, yeah. And that was, as you say, four years ago. And, you know, luckily the world, because of the technology and because of people like Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield and, you know, you name it, mm. they're all using red light therapy now. So it's, it's um, really great gaining momentum. Yeah. That's, uh, I think that's, uh unreal the way that you are started like to actually build your own ones like uh very curious like what did you actually build them out of like was it well we, we never we never built them ourselves we had to oh. we had to like design them and and think about the shape and the size and the amount of leds and the the amount of power you need because you know you can't like you can't take an ordinary little red light bulb and mm you know, get your, get your red light therapy because it has to be very powerful light because the skin is very good at reflecting light or absorbing it in the very top layers of the skin. Mm. So weak, weak light just gets absorbed in the top layer of the skin and never makes it into the body. 
but mm. you have to have a very very powerful light and a very very certain kind of light and that is able to penetrate your skin and penetrate your body and going to your muscles and all that so we knew what we needed and then yeah. we had to find a, a light manufacturer and say look we uh, want this can you make this yeah and they were like well you know at the time they were like what uh, red just red so big and so powerful okay we'll make them um and then that's how it got going so we, yeah. yeah we had to obviously get a, a proper factory with you know proper engineers <laughs> yeah. um yeah, definitely. And, and that's how it happened <laughs> oh when, when you were saying it i was just picturing like you building this like timber frame and like uh you and your mate like building it out yourselves but like that's that's awesome and um yeah. like what like one thing that i one thing that i hear people talk about quite often is like you know what what is the difference or is there is there a similarity between like red light therapy and infrared saunas like or infrared infrared light like um so i know, I know myself i've i've been in like a infrared sauna before and it's it's a much different experience to me like i i feel like being in the in the sauna it's almost like it's almost like it, it feels like i'm heating up from the inside out and um using the the red light banks it's a totally different experience like uh like it still gets like the warming effect but it's not an intense sweat like mm -hmm. experience like what what's the difference between the two yeah so that's a great question because it, there is you know there is a little bit of um uh miscommunication that is going on in, in the wellness scene right and what, what i mean by that is so like you just said so red light therapy when you hear that phrase if someone says oh i'm doing red light therapy that usually means that they're doing red light therapy, which contains red light, which mm. is it obviously manifests as a very, very bright red light. But mm. it actually also contains, usually in a 50-50 ratio, it also contains near infrared light. Mm. So when we look at the spectrum of light, infrared light, to say infrared light is very inaccurate because you know, inside the scientific community, they would go, you have to specify what infrared light because it, infrared light is a massive spectrum. And it goes from near infrared all the way to far infrared and mm. near infrared and far infrared is a massive difference. The only thing they have in co common is the word infrared. Mm. So when people speak of infrared saunas or infrared light, it's kind of the same thing, generally speaking, because when you're in a far infrared sauna, you're sitting in infrared light. Mm. That's what's happening. The far infrared red light is penetrating your body as you said it's heating up the water inside your body mm. it's heating up the water around your cells so you do you sweat from the inside out mm. um, but near infrared light doesn't heat up the water in your body it penetrates your body it gets absorbed by the cells and the cells then make more energy and mm -hmm. with that energy, you know, that's why so many things can get better because the cells have more energy, then the tissue has more energy. And then, you know, if you, if you, if you zoom out, the whole body has more energy. Mm -hmm. So both of those therapies are very, very good for you. They're both, you know, totally different, um, but they both use that word infrared, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a very distinct difference between the two. Yeah. 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 That's so interesting. And so like it, it's really amazing that like you know one one's affecting the water around the cell the other one's actually get it, getting inside the cell and penetrating inside the cell and you touched on like uh like the energy inside the cell being able to increase and i don't know a lot of the listeners on here uh you know they're they're either coming from living you know poor lifestyle behaviors like what we we're talking about at the start of the show and or just in environments where they're not actually being exposed to natural light that much and would you say that there's any other key lifestyle factors that will impact or negatively impact that energy inside the cell or are you seeing like any trends at the moment that um you know more and more and more people are experiencing conditions from low energy inside mm. the cell like the mitochondria mm. 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 Yeah. i mean that's you know unfortunately it, depending on how you deep how deeply you go into that question like you know, unfortunately, everything is bad for us. Mm. Everything we're surrounded by is bad for us. You know, the Wi-Fi, the, the energy coming off your computer, the light that's coming out of your computer, the mm. plastic, you know, what plastic bottle that contains your water, the plastic lunchbox that contains your lunch, 
you know, the, the non-stick frying pan, you know, the, the, the flame retardant spray that they spray on furniture and this and that, so it doesn't burn your house down. All of that is toxic. Mm -hmm. And all of that in varying degrees can affect the way your body feels. You know, you might not notice it. You might just be slightly sluggish and just think that that's, that's your lot. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, like I say, like depending on how extreme you want to go, like there's ways to solve all of those problems. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of them cost a lot of money to like, you know, start blocking those toxins in, in various amounts of ways. But basically, you know, so what, like you say, that what happens is generally the food we eat gets digested and those, whatever it breaks down into goes into the cells. The cells use that as fuel to fuel themselves and produce that little bit of energy that then, you know, goes and helps you take your next breath is that cellular energy. But what we discovered by accident really and it actually makes a lot of sense is that the cells can actually use light in the same way as they can use food to produce mm -hmm. energy so what we discovered is that um, all the cells of the body at least most of the cells of the body have photoreceptors mm -hmm. in the cell so even inside your stomach in your in your stomach and your intestine they have photoreceptors which means they can absorb light yeah. And it's like, so light is supposed to get inside my body? Like, how on earth does that work? But, you know, we now know because of modern science, when you go out in the sun, it's, it's you know, most people, I'm, I'm not sure about Australia because you guys generally have great weather, but like people in the Northern Hemisphere, for example, they know that when that first sunny day comes around, oh my God, you go outside, you get that warm sun on your skin, you get the sun in your eyes and you just feel better. Everybody gets a better mood in, in the summer, you know, and people just think like, oh, it's because it's summer, I'm, I'm happier. But it's actually, you're happier for a biological reason because mm -hmm. you're getting the proper sunlight that you're supposed to get on your skin, in your eyes. And if you ever do sun tanning, you're getting, you're getting the, the light inside your gut as well, into your heart, into your lungs, into your muscles, into your bones, because the, the light waves that we're talking about so in the context of red light therapy we're talking about red light and near infrared light mm. but in the context of the sauna we're talking about far infrared light that all comes from the sun mm. those are those are the most benefits beneficial types of light that actually come from the sun mm. so you can get um very similar effects that we're speaking about by regular sun exposure mm. but the difference is that with the sun especially in australia you're also getting a lot of harmful stuff. Yeah. You know, you're getting that, that brutal UV, which you do need some UV every single day. Don't get me wrong. But I think because of what's happened with the ozone, um, I mean, I noticed that when I was in Australia, like the sun is brutal, man. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I was sunburning like nothing I'd ever experienced before, you know? And I think, and that's the problem, you know? Yeah. If you could, if you could lie in the sun for two hours a day without getting sunburned, you know, then you're, then you're onto a winner, you know, but unfortunately in Australia and, and other places in the Southern hemisphere, you, you should and must get a daily sunlight exposure, but you, all, you obviously mustn't let yourself burn because that's yeah. when the dangers happen, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. you're saying that um, like, uh, you know, roughly about two hours a day of sunlight is like an optimal amount. Was that what you said just before? No, no, no. Sorry. That's, let me clear that up. So, the way, the way I handle my sun exposure is I get a little bit of sunlight mm. all throughout the day, okay? Mm. So that I'm getting, I'm getting morning sun on my skin and in my eyes. That tells my brain it's morning, mm. okay? And that stimulates the hormonal processes to get the, the daytime hormones going. And then around midday, two o'clock, when the sun is at its peak, that's the best time for vitamin D production mm. because the UVB is the most intense. So I get another, you know, 10, 10 to 20 minutes of sun exposure at that time. It's mm. enough to like heat me up. I'm like, I'm hot, you know, in the middle of summer, but it's mm. not enough to burn. You know, I don't let myself get sunburned. Yeah. And then later on in the day, I get another, you know, 10 to 30 minutes of sun exposure, you know, just doing stuff outside. Because mm. now the sun is changing colors. It's moving towards sunset. It's a very subtle color change. 
And that then starts telling my brain and my body, oh, it's, it's getting towards nighttime. Mm. It'll start to slow down the cortisol and the adrenaline and we start to pick up the melatonin. Mm. So th- what I was trying to say when I said that two hour number, you know, you can't lie in the sun for two hours, especially in the Southern hemisphere and not get sun damage. Um, yeah. What I was actually trying to allude to is that to get the same amount of benefits that you would get from a red light therapy device, you would have to be in the sun for yeah. like two hours yeah, gotcha. to get that same amount of infrared light, which is the good light, yeah. but you would be getting too much UV light. Gotcha. So, so yeah, how much? Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, no, thank you. And like what, uh, what sort of amount of time would a person need to be using like a red light in order to get like that amount of like beneficial UV, um, beneficial infrared? Um, you, with, 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 so everyone's devices are different, you know. So now there's obviously a bunch of red light therapy companies out there, um, and everybody's making different devices, you know, different power, this and that. So with our devices, you're looking again. Also depends what your actual goal is because there's a bunch of different ways to use red light therapy. But you're looking between as little as five minutes a day up to twenty minutes a day. That's yeah. it. That's all you need. Wow, well, that's that's mm. insane. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I know, like, uh, again, like a lot of the listeners are pretty much working in jobs where they're, they're not really getting that natural sunlight that often. And, you know, some of the symptoms that people often experience is like, uh, like, you know, poor moods, depression, you know, a bit of brain fog. And they typically feel like they don't actually have that ability to function mentally at their best. And, you know, going through your, your page earlier on, like, start to have a look at like some of the benefits that people can actually experience with their mental performance with the use of red light therapy. And um, I was just curious, do you mind like diving into some of the, the processes or how red light therapy can actually, you know, boost the person's cognitive, cognitive performance? Hello, mate. Hey, you there, Brian? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, did I cut you out there for a second? Yeah, yeah. Well, my Zoom just completely crashed. Did your recording carry on? Yeah, my my one carried on. Oh, great. Okay, cool. Just as long as we haven't lost it. Yeah, my Zoom just crashed suddenly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my camera off, if that's okay. Yeah, totally. That's cool. Um, Yeah, so I was just saying that, like, uh, there's quite a lot of listeners working in office jobs and, you know, they don't actually get that access to sunlight. And, you know, as a result, um, you, as you were speaking about before with the skating rhythms, um, you know, not really being in tune with their environment, not really signaling their body for the wake and sleep times. And I noticed that quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of those people actually experience, you know, symptoms of, you know, depression, um, you know, mental brain fog. Um, they're not, not very mentally clear. They can't perform at their best in that way. And, you know, touching, touching on, um, you know, a few of the resources and by the way, your website's absolutely brilliant like the amount of resources that you guys have put up there is unreal like absolutely amazing but i saw how you know red light therapy can actually boost mental performance and i was wondering whether you can touch on touch on how that actually works or how that how that process happens yeah so it just reminds me of of a little story once i was um you know i was doing like a a a biohacking conference event in london and somebody came up to me like, a, I don't know who it was, but they came up to me and said, what is, what is the top biohack that you would recommend to people? And I said, move to hot country. Okay. And they kind of like, they laughed. They're like, ha, 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 that's great. And I, and I was like, because that's what I was doing for myself. And I said, no, I'm dead serious. Move to a sunny country because the sun is so important. Like you can't, you can't even imagine. So, you know, about your your question there with people that are working in offices and all that, you know, and, and I know it's, you know, it's, it's easy for me to say, because I, I don't have like the dependence that a lot of your listeners might have. I don't have the, you know, the obligations that some of your listeners might have, but you know, my, my number one bit of advice is like, if you work indoors all day, you know, stop, <laughs> you know, somehow, somehow you have to get natural sunlight at, at those various points throughout the day, you know? So If you're working in an office, you're working on a computer all day, you're working under artificial light, you've got to somehow wrangle it into your day that, you know, you can go out for 10 minutes in the morning, go out for 10, 15 minutes at lunchtime, 
go out for 10, 15 minutes towards the end of the day, you know, um, just, just for the sake, because that getting that sunlight at different times of the day, that's what's marking your circadian rhythm. So getting that morning sun, your, 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 your biology knows because of millions of years, oh, it's roughly 9 a.m. Getting that sun at lunchtime, oh, it's roughly lunchtime. Getting that sun at 5, 5 p.m., oh, it's roughly 5 p.m. And then, you know, if you can manage the rest of your light exposure after that, your brain will be way more ready for sleep. So to get back to your question, why does red light therapy work so well for so many different things? Because ironically, one of the biggest problems we found that when we started trying to educate people about red light therapy is that you can't just go around and say, oh, it's good for everything. Just use it. It's good for everything. Because if anybody tells you, oh, you know, this, this X product is good for everything, and immediately you're like, how can it be? How can it be good for everything? You know, how can it be good for thyroid health and joint pain and, uh, you know, hormonal balance and muscle building and speed performance and cognitive benefits like that doesn't make sense it's not possible but when you understand how red light therapy works then you suddenly realize oh that's why it works for everything and the reason it works so well for everything is because of the nature that this light um, both the red and the infrared light is able to penetrate your body to depths that no other light can and get absorbed by the cells of the body in pretty much all the different layers of the body and when those cells absorb the light, two things happen. The first thing that happens is that the cells are able to absorb that light and use it as fuel to produce more cellular energy. So in the context of, you know, whether it's muscles or the brain or whatever it is, if that, that part of the body has more energy to work, it generally does its job better. So if it's a muscle that has to contract, it contracts harder and faster with less fatigue. If it's the brain cells that need to you know, work better to process thoughts or to come up with new thoughts, it tends to process those thoughts faster, um, better and with less you know, waste products as it were. So that's the first benefit. It's the increase in cellular energy production, which helps everything do its job better. And the second major benefit is it stimulates a release of natural anti-inflammatories that then you know, leave the cell, it leaves the tissue, and it goes into the bloodstream. And those natural anti-inflammatories circulate around your body, and they contribute to reducing inflammation wherever you might have it. So in the context of the brain, again, we know that a lot of brain fog is caused by inflammation. And that inflammation could be, you know, from a bad diet or from too much junk light, not enough sleep, uh, you know, not enough fresh air, things like that. And this, the red light therapy can contribute to reducing the inflammation all over the body because of those two processes that I've just mentioned. Does that make sense to you? Can't hear you, Daniel. Are you still there, mate? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. 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 It's just really amazing how much like that red light can actually stimulate so many like biological functions in the body. Like um, it really, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a piece of groundbreaking technology and um, mm. yeah. And like, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's technology. Like you said, it's brown, it's groundbreaking technology, but it's completely natural. Yeah. Because it's the, it's the infrared light from the sun that makes you have these good reactions, right? So we, we, we've evolved with this incredible sun exposure where a lot of the light that we're getting is infrared light. That's the warmth from the sun, mm -hmm. by the way. When you feel warmth or heat, that's infrared light. And it's doing the same thing. It's penetrating your body and it's doing all these positive things inside your body. And we realize that you know, quite by accident and then are able to harness it in a piece of technology that you can have inside your house. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, I guess like I was more so looking through the lens of uh, just say my own own lifestyle right now. I'll have days where, um, you know, just say if it's, if it's uh, busy with work, I might not get out for, you know, walk in the afternoon or walk in the morning. And just like, I can just imagine myself like having, having a light here, like it mm -hmm. would really, you know, boost, boost that level of energy production and uh, like biological process, like the regulation on those days. Mm -hmm. and 
Um, that's what, you know, talking about it being a groundbreaking piece of technology, it would just be such, um, you know, it would fill a, a big void for quite a lot of people. And mm -hmm. Absolutely right. And like with, because uh, I know like uh, quite a lot of people use red light to treat like acute acute pain and like joint pain specifically like targeted on the area um mm -hmm. like with 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 that again obviously coming from natural natural light um like obviously the infrared natural light can that still give the same type of results as like targeted red light therapy because um you know seeing the the technology that you guys have it's quite an intense amount of light like does it is there mm -hmm uh like having um, the yeah it's it's tough to say you know um you'd have to somehow be able to do some kind of experiment with the same amount of pain in, in two different elbows for example and and just oh, yeah. give the one person sunlight and the other person targeted red light therapy um the benefits are very very similar that you get from the sun but mm. they're just much less or much weaker you know so yeah. you know it's the thing I, we say to people is we always say like do the free and easy stuff first before you invest in red light therapy mm. so if you're if you're not getting natural light get natural light first mm. find a way to make that into your routine find a way to maximize the amount of natural light you can get safely and once you've hit that goal then you can start thinking about you know spending money on getting supplemental light yeah. Um, because red light therapy, you know, it's it's intended to be a supplement to to good natural light for you know all the all the benefits you've mentioned previously. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't. I mean, if 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 I took a target light, which is one of our, our very very small products, I, if I take the target light and I put it on my knee because um, I'm currently recovering from a knee surgery, it instantly removes the pain. Wow. You know, I do a, I do a four to five minute session directly on my knee and it instantly removes the pain and it removes that pain because it's increasing the cellular energy. It's increasing the anti-inflammatories and it's increasing the blood flow through that area. And all of those things together, it equals pain relief. Right mm -hmm. now, it's not permanent. You know, I've got to do it every other day um, as the pain comes. You know, if I'm like, you know, if I maybe squat too deep one day or whatever, and then I get a bit of knee pain, I've got to I've got to get the red light out again but it instantly reduces the pain. And in my experience, the sun wouldn't do the same thing for me in the same amount of time. Yeah. So that's, that's my opinion right there, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, yeah, that's, that's like where my thinking was at as well. Like, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, experienced when I, when I did use the red light therapy, like the red light rising therapy, there's a place uh, close by who's got a They've got a great setup in their facility. It's in Byron Bay. It's called Quantum Uplift. Um, awesome. Yeah, and uh, that's a that's an experience that I had. Like I had some pain in my shoulder at the time, and um, I think there was a pain in the middle thoracic area. And like after using it, the pain was gone, and you know, yeah. it got me thinking. Like like you know, with that targeted targeted red light, it would you know just obviously have those have those effects that would be different and. Um, I know at the start, like when I was introducing you, you said, uh, like mentioned that you've got like a, a routine that you follow like every day. Would you be um, up for sharing what your what your routine is that you work through? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So my routine um, is a little bit mixed up and, you know, a little bit messed up because, you know, for the last couple of years, I have been moving around a lot. So mm. my routine has changed, but now I'm, you know, I'm living in Cape Town, South Africa. I'm very, very close to the beach. Um, and the water in South Africa is very, very cold. So what I generally do is I, a lot of people like to do all their biohacks at once, you know, so example, you know, people will do, they'll jump into the sauna and then they'll jump out and they'll do their red light therapy. Then they'll jump in an ice bath straight away. And they'll also fast for the rest of the day, you know, whatever the mm -hmm. case is. And I think that that is a little bit too intense because all of these biohacks Another name for it is hormetic stressor. Okay. Mm. And a hormetic stressor, the most simplest example is you work out, you know, you do heavy bicep curls, then your biceps hurt for a couple of days, and they rebuild and come back bigger and stronger, ready to take the next challenge. Yeah. That's a hormetic stressor. So this is what fasting is, it's what, it's what cold therapy is, it's what heat therapy is, and it's also what red light therapy is. It causes a tiny amount of stress on well, a varying amount of stress on your body. 
and causes your body to react and come back stronger to handle the stress the next time. Mm. So doing everything all at once, I don't think is a good idea because it's different kinds of stress all at the same time. So you've got the cold stress, your body's got to react to the cold. Then suddenly it's the hot stress. Your body, oh, it's got to switch and react to the hot stress. Then it's the red light therapy stress and it's got to switch and react to that. And then you're hungry for the rest of the day, you know? So mm. I don't think it's a good idea to do everything all at once. So what I do is um, I wake up and, you know, I drink a glass of water, whatever. And I am now actually in the phase of I'll, I'll put some music on. I'll put some really kind of like chilled out reggae. And I'll just start like literally dancing just around the kitchen. You know, this is like six, between six and seven in the morning. I'll just, just to get movement, you know, because mm. I wake up a little bit stiff and a little bit tight. So I'll just literally start swaying and moving my body around and then start, you know, moving a little bit more intensely as I start to warm up, I start to wiggle my spine and just, I, I take all the movement that I can, you know, I just, it's like almost like ecstatic dance, right? I just let mm. my, my body flow, whichever way it needs to, to, to get all the range of motion through all my joints. I'll do that for about half an hour while I'm drinking a cup of herbal tea. Um, you know, I'm opening the curtains, I'm, I'm getting the natural light in, um, I'm very lucky at my house now. I just open the door and I'm outside. I'm, you know, got the amazing sea view. And I'll just keep moving around like that for half an hour until I'm nice and warm, till I've actually got a little bit of a sweat on. Um, and then I start my workout. So I do my workouts every morning. I do them, well, usually I do them fasted uh, or just black coffee. Uh, right now I'm doing bulletproof coffee again for just some, some other reasons. But normally I'll do it just with black coffee and I'll do my workouts. I'll, you know, I'll do a, a pretty decent warm up for my workout and then lift some weights and then do a pretty decent cool down uh, for my workout as well. Some nice stretching, this and that. And then I'll come straight inside and I'll do my red light therapy. I do it after my workout because it will help the joints recover. It will help the muscles recover faster. It'll help rebuild faster. So that's pretty much my, my morning's done. And then I, I get to work, you know, I start answering it. So I don't, I don't switch my take my phone my phone off airplane mode until after my workout mm. so i don't i don't check whatsapp i don't check emails i don't do any of that like that's you know this is my time my phone stays off i've got my music preloaded on my phone i've got my a couple of podcasts preloaded so i don't have to go on the internet um then i'll uh, so i'll get to work and then throughout the working day i'm sitting and working then i take a, a break i get up i walk i go outside i get some sun on my body I walk around, you know, I go to the standing desk, I stand and work for a little bit. Then I, again, I walk around, I go outside. Um, I, I change the visual environment. So if I'm staring at the computer for an hour, I go outside and just like look around for 10 minutes, just, you know, look at the plants, look at the view, look at the distance, um, just to change the stimulus for my eyes and for my brain. I might even read a book, you know, a proper book for 10, 15 minutes, just to just to give my brain a break and give my eyes a break from the screen and all that. And it'll go on pretty much uh, throughout the day. And then late afternoon, I might, I might either go drive to the gym and take a sauna, or I'll go to the beach and, and have, a, have a swim in the ocean, which is freezing, and I'll do my cold therapy. So I alternate my, I alternate my cold ther therapy and my sauna you know, every other day not not every other day but like every two or three days i'll either do cold therapy or i'll do a sauna but i i don't do both at the same time um and then my evening session is i'm very very strict with the evening stuff as soon as the sun goes down um i turn off as many devices as i can i turn off as much artificial lighting as i can and i turn on red lights all over my house so i obviously have a bunch of different red light devices or red light bulbs and i just turn them on so the whole house is lit up in red because mm. the color red does not interfere with sleep hormone production. The color blue, which you know is hidden in the, in, the, in the colors that come from your cell phone and your laptop and your TV screen, this is all the light that stimulates your brain. Mm. So what I'm doing in the evening after sunset is I'm just in, existing in a red light environment. So it's bright enough to see what I'm doing but it's red light only. And this mm. is just, you know, for anybody that's, that's done it before or is going to try it, it just relaxes you like you wouldn't believe. Mm. Because after sunset, when your brain 
picks up the red light signal either from the sun or from an artificial source at the end of the day, you know, because you've gone through the whole day with all the natural light and it picks up the red colors at the end of the day, it knows it's nearly time for sleep because mm -hmm. in, you know, in our, in our 2 million year history, that's what happened. Mm. You know, after the sunset, it was pitch black or after the fire, you know, the campfire, it was kind of red and orange and infrared light coming from the fire. Um, it's then pitch black and then it's time to sleep. So that's what I'm mimicking in the evening. I'm mimicking that red sunlight or the red fire. Um, and then I use, I'll use blue blocking glasses if I, you know, have to whatever, mess around on my phone or, you mm. know, look at something on the computer. I'll use blue blocking glasses and then I try and sleep in a pitch black room after that. Um, and that's, that's pretty much my daily routine, you know, give or take. Mm. That's, a, that's a very strong routine. Like you, sounds like you've got it very dialed in there. And um, I've got to ask you, like, because I've uh, I've looked at the the red lights after after dark. I've never committed to doing it in the household yet, but you know, after hearing hearing that, I'm I'm very like curious to 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 feel what it would be like to actually have that that stimulus in my environment. And, like, do you find now that you know after following that routine, is that something that you do every day? Like, is that like hundred percent? Yeah. So after yeah, like following 100%. that. Oh, so yeah, I was going to say like after following that routine, like, do you find that you're like sensitive to just say if you were to go out, you know, for dinner or something like that with your a mate uh, at a restaurant surrounded by blue light? Do you find that you're really sensitive absolutely. to that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's kind of, it's kind of a, a bummer in a way, you know, because when you're not aware of all this stuff and you, you hang around out, underneath artificial lights you know in late into the evening i mean mm. for me now my worst nightmare is sitting in someone's house like if i'm visiting friends at nine o'clock at night and there's all this light on it, mm. it drives me mad because i can i can feel i actually can feel my brain going like what the hell like it's 9 p.m like what's this because when you when your brain perceives bright light after sunset it's confused Mm. It's, it starts to think what is it has the sun suddenly come up again because all your brain knows is the sun for a light source it doesn't mm. know about light bulbs it doesn't know about computer screens it doesn't know about all this stuff so yeah it's actually a bit of a pain in the ass because you get so used to um having certain kinds of light at certain times of the day that when you go out of that environment it does seem particularly harsh you know so mm. you know even going into a shopping mall now like a, a you know a proper indoor shopping mall during the day it, by the time I get out of there, I might be in there for an hour. By the time I get out, I'm exhausted, mm. even though I, you know, just strolled around. But it's because all that artificial light, which your body is not used to, because you've been, you know, managing it usually quite well. Yeah, it can be a little bit overwhelming, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the way I live is is not suitable for everyone because it's, you know, a lot of people, especially if you've got a family, you know, then to like suddenly switch off all the lights and have everything in red light like it's like mm. you know it's difficult to look after the kids although you know it works incredibly well for kids you know i always tell my my friends who are parents i'm like man I'm telling you switch off all the lights put on some little red lights those kids will be asleep you know 45 minutes before they usually do because it just mm. it just completely calms everyone down so yeah i'm of the opinion that it's, it's absolutely worth the effort um although it does take a bit of adjustment it takes some getting used to um, but it's easy as well. You know, you could pop to your, you know, your local hardware store, like a good hardware store and, and grab some red light bulbs. You know, they're just generally light bulbs that are painted red mm. and pop them into your, you know, some, some bedside lamps and some, you know, lamps in the lounge or whatever. And after sunset, man, you switch those things on. It's, it's an absolute game changer. It just yeah, changes the whole, the whole mood. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so curious to, to feel the, feel the change and like touching on, because I, I have kids and like touching on, on like obviously the change in the routine i feel like you know it's a it's a change that would just have such a positive impact on them anyway so you know initially it may be a bit of a challenge to adjust but like in the in the long run it's just a, you know another another habit or another routine that's going to positively impact the future you know um i do want to be mindful of time because i know that you've got a, another another um arrangement after this but just to finish up like how would you say that you're like if you were to describe the the amount of energy or the vitality that you feel following a routine like that for so long now, like how would you describe it to someone? If they're like, Hey, like, what's it, what's it feel like? 
you know, following that loss? Um, well, I guess I, I guess it comes from like where your starting point is, you know, because it's you know if if I give this routine to an athlete, you know, if this if a pro athlete starts following this routine, they're they're probably not going to notice much difference because mm. they're you know they're already pretty finely tuned. They're they're generally functioning pretty well. Um, the the people who benefit the most from these kind of routines are the people that are the most out of sync with it. Mm. You know, they're the people that um, are already feeling terrible. They're eating terrible. They've got they're sleeping badly. They're they're constantly got brain fog because they wake up and they're playing on their phone. They go to sleep. They're playing on their phone. Um, so it's it's the the more healthy you are, the the more subtle it is. Mm. But um, you know, every, also everyone's slightly different, you know? So like, for example, we do work with a bunch of uh, pro athletes and the biggest thing they report is sleeping better, mm. you know, because they're, they're performing at a pretty high level every day. So, you know, they, they go to sleep pretty wired, pretty stressed out. So when they take on some of our recommendations, particularly the red light at night or, you know, red light therapy during the day or in the evening, and using the blue blocking glasses, they are sleeping a lot better because yeah. their sleep is kind of bad. So it's easy to make good, um, to get good results. Um, but yeah, the, the starting point is always, you know, especially if someone's got aches and pains, man, if they tell us they got arthritis, I'm like, just try this light. Mm -hmm. Give it a week on your painful joints and, you know, almost bet the house on it. You're going to get great results. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, I, I feel like, like, like going through, going through the, the benefits that we've sort of talked about today, like, you know, I feel like, yeah, so many people could feel a benefit. And I know for myself, I'm just really excited to uh, try those red lights at night. Like you've got me really curious about that. Mm. <laughs> really curious. Yeah. But, um, Give it a bash, man. I mean, you can, you can start with candles, you know, candles yeah. is, is a great option for nighttime. Uh, all those salt lamps, you know, those big chunks of Himalayan salt with a light bulb inside it. That's a great option. Um, and in, the, in the most basic sense, you can just throw a, a red T-shirt over a normal lamp, you know, mm -hmm. and that's going to give you very, very similar results. Like there's, there's no red light therapy per se, but yeah. just that red glow is, oh my gosh, you'll sleep like a baby. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well, um, Brian, thanks for joining me today on, on the show. Like absolutely had a brilliant chat and, You've really opened my eyes to just how much deeper, uh, you know, red uh, red light therapy is, and you know, not mm. not even that, like just you know, natural natural light from the sun. So I really thank you for jumping on today and sharing sharing your wisdom and sharing your knowledge with us. And if people want to find you, I'll, I'll drop some links in below this podcast as well. But what's the best way that people could get in contact with Red Light Rising? Yeah, if they want to check out um, the website, it's redlightrising.co.uk. Um, there's a bunch of great resources on there. As you said, we've we've done our we've tried our hardest to make blogs and videos that explain everything I've just said um, in a in a usually pretty simple way. And there's also a contact us button there. You can contact us. Your people can ask for me directly if they want. I'm always happy to speak to people. Uh, I do a lot of Zoom calls with people who have uh, you know technical questions like this. Um, so yeah, start on our on our website and drop us a line on the contact us button, and they can ask for me directly. I'm always happy to chat, and you know the same on the Instagram at Red Light Rising. We're very active on there as well. We we answer a lot of questions there, so that's the best place to look. Awesome, and um, for all of you listeners who are keen to check out Red Light Rising, um, when you're on their site, you can actually go go through and use the discount code Thrive and receive a 10% discount off your order as well. So um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being generous to offer that, Brian. And again, thanks for jumping on today. It's been awesome having a chat with you and diving deep. You're very in. welcome. It was great. You're so welcome. Thanks so much for the invitation. And I hope what I said makes sense to people. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. Thanks, Brian. I'll